Okay, now let's talk about something called a common datum feature. This is why I kind of flubbed up earlier when I said we're only ever going to see three letters. Because technically, oh, come on, don't do that to me. You could see more. And you'll see it's something like this. And you're like, well, isn't that just two datums? It's not, actually. This is called a common datum feature. And what's happening here is we're using both A and B to make a single axis that it rotates around. Okay, so we're not just using the axis of B. We're not using just the axis of A, we're using some common, like average axis that takes into account both of them at the same time. And what you would do then is if it's using a common datum feature, well, you would put both feature symbols, letters right here, separated by a dash. Now, why do you do this? Well, usually it's because that's how it's held. Like in this case, let's say that this is like a belt. You know, this would be a belt that attaches around here, and this might be held in two bearings. And so the axis is not just one or the other, it's actually both that are holding it in place and it's rotating freely through both. So it's the axis of both that we care about. Um, so that's a very common case where we have these common datum features. They're establishing that axis. Um, and so if that's the way it's being held in real life, we want our feature control frames and our datums to match real life, to match reality, to match function. And so we're going to use that common data feature by specifying that little dash there, a feature control frame. Okay, another quick one, but important. Remember, common data features are because we want our tolerancing to match how it's being constrained and used in real life. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.